People are gonna be upset. You can't really target your inner chest and grow that middle bit. It is absolutely pointless. Now you probably didn't see this one coming, but. Okay guys, so the purpose of this video is to tell you the exercises that I think are either pointless or you can do better ones, but I do see them a lot. They're very common. Uh, there is, is not to say that these are absolutely horrendous and should be banned, and if you commit them, you should be crucified. Um, some gyms will do that. Planet Fitness might actually, <laughs> if you scream when doing like a plate loaded flight, they might, they might crucify you. Um, but no, everybody gets their back up because people get emotionally attached to exercises. Sweet, I've never really done that. I mean, when I was younger, I did, but now I feel like I'm the mindset of, if there's a better option, sweet. Sweet. It's only better for me if, that I, if I do that. So um, a lot of people get emotionally invested in exercises. That's why, no doubt you'll see in the comments, people are gonna be upset. They're gonna be, they're gonna be very triggered by this. And I hope for their sake that they can find a safe space somewhere. But today's video, I'm gonna tell you guys five exercises that I think you should avoid. Well, I personally like to avoid, and I'll give you five exercises that you can do instead, okay? So better options. Now, but if you, if you really love the exercise that I don't, all good, keep doing it. I honestly couldn't care less. Um, but for the people that are gonna benefit from swapping it out for something that I think is a bit better, then go for it, let me know. But let's get into it with the first exercise that I see all the time, especially on Instagram, and it has to go. And that is the standing dumbbell upper chest squeeze. Don't, don't even think it has a name, it's just, let's go by that. Okay, so this exercise is meant to target your upper chest. I, I did this when I was younger for a long time. I used to do it with a plate and it, it is absolutely pointless. So essentially what you'll see people doing is this. They've got a dumbbell or a weight plate and they're just going up like that and squeezing the chest. All right, so basically you might feel it. You might go, oh, yeah, that gets the upper chest. How come? But most people will do it by just raising, using their front delt here. So you can see that I can actually take my entire chest out of this by just doing a front delt raise, right? So yeah, you're gonna get some chest activation there, but very minimal. And if you're trying to warm up your chest, right? It's not really gonna, you may as well just stand there and squeeze and hold that without a weight and actually feel your upper chest, connect with it. Little case study, my cousin Harrison, Harrison! For those who watch the channel, um, <laughs> I hate to put you on the spot Harrison, but Harrison had a really weak upper chest. Like it just was not responding at all. And one of the things he would do when he came down to train, he started warming up his upper chest. And I was like, hmm. Because all I could see was front delts firing like crazy. That's all I saw was doing a front delt race. So he was basically warming up the front delts to activate him before he starts the chest workout. So his upper chest recruitment was pretty terrible after warming up because he actually hadn't warmed up his chest properly. So then we switched that out for a different one, which I'm gonna show you right now. We're gonna grab the cables. I have this on a very light weight. There's like two plates in, no handles if you want but i don't really like it and this is the activator that i do so i will do this before my chest workouts it's kind of like a warm-up but it's an activation so it's really meant to connect your mind muscle with your chest so here you'll squeeze like a normal fly but you want to get a bit of that upper chest going so you really want to squeeze out like that and make it as short as possible make that chest contraction as short as possible so stretch squeeze it's down and up that's what i think so you're squeezing up like that and your whole chest should activate from here there squeeze if you want to get more upper chest just bring your arm your elbow across the body more in a diagonal motion like that across and up like that this will kill your whole chest but let's say you just wanted to get a pump in your upper chest at the end of a workout i have no problem with doing them on the cables just like this it's way better than using a dumbbell the tension is entirely different than just gravity and you'll have that on the chest the whole time there and then at least you can see in the mirror if you have cables opposing a mirror, where your shoulders take over and you can actually actively try and keep them out by maybe moving your shoulder blade back, slowing the movement down, squeezing with your chest and coming nice and high across the body. But if you're doing that with dumbbells or a plate, it's just not gonna be good enough. The second one is kickbacks. Now, I'm not even sure if people still do this, but I, I still see it on Instagram, so I have to address it. I never liked these. It's meant to get more of the outer head, I think that's what people think, but really, it's just not a thing. I could do this all day. For one, it uses a lot of momentum. By default, you swing in anyway. Secondly, it's a very weird position to flex your tricep like that. There's a lot of things keeping that dumbbell up there. Tricep may be one of them, but it's a lot of shoulder and it just feels uncomfortable. So if you wanna grow your triceps, 
you can do something like this. Inverted shaker kickbacks. Now really, there's a number of exercises better for your triceps and kickbacks. Stick to your basic compound movements you can overload on, so close grip bench presses, dips, great. But that said, if you can't activate your triceps properly doing those, you're gonna be moving a lot with your shoulders, chest, and everything else. So I would recommend cables for the sheer purpose that it's easier to really dominate with your triceps instead of your other muscles taking over. So an easy one is straight bar push down. Now for this, shoulders back, keep the bar just above your chest there. And my feet are just neutrally pointed now, they're not staggered. Squeeze down, really squeeze with the tricep. Push the bar against your quads almost. Then on the eccentric, tuck the elbows back. So feel like they just suck back a little bit, they take the load, you'll feel that stretch, pause, squeeze as hard as you can. So the whole rep will look like this. This is the speed I do them, as heavy as I possibly can. But maybe you wanna do it a bit more isolated, I suggest using ropes. So with the ropes, same deal applies. Elbows back, shoulders back, squeeze down. Now there are a few ways to do these, but my favorite is just to keep my elbows back the entire time. Don't focus as much on moving your hands, fucking balls in the face. Don't focus too much on, on spreading your hands out. Focus really on squeezing your triceps as hard as you can. Let the hands kind of go where they, where they may. Ideally, you use two ropes. That's kind of what I like to do. Two ropes and then you just, your hands can move freely. You're not trying to break the ropes in half and separate them because you can't really target and isolate specific heads of your tricep by changing the way you are doing like a rope. So let's say I'm doing a single arm push down. It doesn't really matter the position of your wrist in terms of trying to activate a certain part of your tricep. It's more of like a personal thing. If you personally can contract it better with an underhand grip, sweet, do that. But for most people, it doesn't matter. Whatever's comfortable. I usually like to keep a neutral grip for me. Uh, that's why I really love ropes. So I'll do ropes like this, slow, control, pause, squeeze, hold the squeeze. If you can't hold the squeeze, it's too heavy. And the best thing about these two is you can add in some partial reps when you fatigue the muscle a bit more. I do these by just leaning over like that, a little bit, hands together, just to use a bit more leverage, and I can crank out a few more like that. Ropes are great. They get a bad rap because they're more of an isolation work, but if you, can, if you use them well, you can smash your triceps with ropes. Most people don't use them well. Most people, they'll look like a train wreck when they're doing ropes because they're trying to lift the most weight and just pump out reps, but focus on the quality of every rep, slow them down, do them like this, and let me know in the comments how it feels. I guarantee you after doing one set of slow, controlled, with weight that's as heavy as you can for those reps, you'll be dead. Now this one has to be my most hated. I've done these before. I used to do them my first couple of years of training. Thought it targeted the inner chest. So these are plate presses. because it's of the opinion that this is hitting your inner chest more, which is not really a thing, if I'm being honest with you. You can't really target your inner chest and grow that middle bit. Your chest is gonna grow as a whole. Your genetics are gonna determine the, the structure, really, of the muscle. No close grip like that is gonna get you that. Again, I'm not a fan of the hex press. Dumbbells are very close. It's basically just like a close grip bench. But again, the, the logic is because your hands are close, it's more squeezing, which is more inner chest, all right? That's why I would switch all of those out for just a regular dumbbell press. You slow down, slight pause at the bottom, keep your shoulder blades pinned back the entire time, squeeze with the chest, hold the squeeze a little bit, lower them back down again. The dumbbell press is an exercise that you can overload on quite easily. It's a good, obviously good compound. I prefer it to the, just a bench press to, with the bar uh, because I can get better stretch. And I feel like it takes more of my chest to control the weight. But that said, sometimes I'll do bench because I can go a lot heavier if I wanna kind of build some strength. So the hex press and the plate press are terrible for building strength in my opinion. A lot of people do the hex press because it kind of looks cool. But in my opinion, it's just making the exercise shit up because you can't, you can't lift anything and it just feels uncomfortable and you're of the illusion that you can build that in a chest, which you just can't. You gotta actually hit the chest as a whole. So, enough on that one, next one. Now another one I'm not a fan of is dumbbell flies. Now, bear with me. I used to do dumbbell flies. I don't mind them. If I haven't got access to any cables, I will probably still do them, but I think it's safe to say that you can happily and gladly swap a dumbbell fly for a cable fly and get so much more benefit, okay? So dumbbell flies, they're doable. It's still gonna stretch your chest. There's still some tension, but okay, well, I'll tell you why I don't really love them. <sighs> Traditional dumbbell fly. Thank you, Arnie. Stretch, stretch, stretch. All good in the chest, all good. Most people will actually overstretch this which is just terrible, bad news anyway. But anyway, let's just pretend that people do this properly and just stop at the right point. 
Squeezing up, good, that's a bit of chest, bit of chest, bit of chest, now it's none, 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 none. No chest at all. That's the problem with this, is gravity, just from dumbbells, is great up until a certain point where it's nothing. So from here to here is zero. You can do what Arnie did and just keep it within that range, but keeping it in that range, you actually don't really get a squeeze. You try squeezing, and maybe if your training partner is doing flies, just have a look at the chest, touch it if you can't, if you're comfortable, and you'll notice that when you get to like there, it's not really a squeeze. And to train your muscle as best as you possibly can, you wanna stretch it and then contract it with weight. But with cable flies, you're able to stretch the chest like we do with dumbbell fly, but the cables give you that different tension. So you can actually get tension the whole way. So right now, I'm basically, I'm squeezing my hands nearly together, and the tension on my chest is huge. So I do these every workout. You're able to stretch it, stretch it, stretch it, make sure the money do. The cables are around shoulder height. They're not too high. You can do them high if you like, but for me, this is perfect. Stretch, squeeze with the chest, still on, hard there. Hold that. If you touch my chest now, I know you can't, you probably want to, joking, it's hard. It's, that's, and that's what we want. A, a dumbbell fly, you wouldn't get that. So here, I'm also able to hit different parts of my chest. So I will hit my mid chest mainly by doing this, but just by bringing my arms up a little bit and getting a little arc motion, I'll get a bit more upper. Play around with your grip. For me, I like to kind of at the, at the top, just fold it out a little bit, just to relax the wrists, get as much chest squeeze as you can, just to keep that tension on. So you can happily replace any dumbbell fly with a cable movement and I guarantee you'll feel a better result. Now you probably didn't see this one coming, but a dumbbell pullover. Bear with me yet again. This is not a terrible exercise, it's not terrible, but I just think you could swap it out and you'd get way better results. So if you're underwear, usual dumbbell pullover, this is probably a chest oriented one. If you wanna do it for lats, a usual dumbbell pullover, straight arms, big stretch, feels quite good, and come up. The reason why I don't like this is on the up, you get a lot of chest, so not much lat. There's not a lot of, there's a good lat stretch, but your lat contraction is pretty poor here. It's actually really difficult to squeeze your lats, in my opinion, from here. You can just do it, but it's, it's not ideal. So doing the pullovers on the ropes instead is a way better option. Now, this little tip slash exercise is only something I really give to my coaching clients as part of my program. If you wanna join, sign up below, because I think it's the best, because for one, it gets sick results, and two, it makes me money. So. How good is that? It's, it's a win-win in my book. Anyway, it's nothing wizardry or tricky. It's just a lot of hours spent practicing this myself as I was learning it and really um, getting to know what was going on. So um, this is the rope pullover as a little variation, right? So most people when they do rope pullovers, it's very much swing action. It's like that, it's A to B. It's not, it's not a lot of back. But if you think about it, we wanna hit lats, right? So say we're doing dumbbell pullovers trying to hit our lats. Let's ditch that for a second, put that aside and think, all right, let's hit, let's hit our lats. So for this, Little trick is what I was taught. Nice relaxed grip. I got the old two finger of death grip. Decent, use that. Stretch your lats. Now you don't need to over stretch and do this, right? Just stretch your lats, just to about there. That's good for me. Now here, elbows tight. Keep them tight and in like that. So you can thrust your hips forward, come up with your upper body, chest up, elbows come back, and you'll squeeze back and in and tight. So you're not squeezing out like that. Elbows low, down and tight. So, few cues here. But what you want to think about is you want to imagine that your elbows are coming down. So they're down, keep them low, keep them low, and around. That's like what it's like, is it's a stretch, you come up, down, 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 and around. That is gonna drill your lats, because your lats, you want to imagine like you're twisting your elbow around your spine there, so it's coming all the way around. Do that with both hands, keep them tight. So when I do this, this is the cues I think. Okay, stretch, elbows down, tight, chest up, squeeze back, hard back, whole thing, squeeze, hold that for a second. Again, hips come back, stretch the lats, drive forward, elbows down, squeeze. That is killing my lats and this is lightweight. Now that's gonna get a lot of lower lat development. Now lower lats are really hard to train. Not a lot of people have impressive lower lats. Why? Because they are hard to train. You can't just magically stumble your way across and get these thick as shit, juicy lower lats. Unless you're genetically elite, it doesn't really happen. You'll get this, a bit of things happening here, maybe a bit of upper lats, 
but to get the, the lats starting really thick, mine are lucky I start quite low, but that thickness in the lower comes from training them properly. So you only really get that by maybe a dumper pullover or shitty form on a pullover. You wanna get the most bang for your buck. That's why I load this up as heavy as I can for 10 reps, but each rep will look exactly like that. But guys, that is it for me. Like I said, please don't get too emotionally invested and attached into exercises. If one day someone came to me and said, hey, you know what? I've got a better exercise than a cable fly for your chest. Here's why, and I do it and I like it. I'm not gonna be married to the cable fly, all right? This is one big thing. Don't get so obsessed and defensive about exercises. If one thing works for me, it might not work for you, but I've seen these exercises work better in a lot of people. That's why I'm happy and proud to just talk about them. But if it was just a kind of a personal thing and I'd be like, I feel it more when I do this, I probably wouldn't really make a video on it. But for the most part, these five exercises are ones that I would avoid and switch out with better ones. So usually you can make, I mean, you can make a good exercise Horrendous, if you have really shit form. So there's not to say there's any great and then bad exercises. It's more ones you can do better, easier, and there's ones that can be dangerous and maybe a little bit more cost versus the benefit you're gonna get from them. So you don't really wanna do a lot of that. That's kind of where you have to choose. But if I could give you guys any kind of one piece of singular advice from the video, it's, it's actually take notice of how you're performing an exercise. Because like I said, I could give someone a cable fly, and then I could do a cable fly, or maybe someone, a very experienced trainer as well, could do a cable fly, entirely different exercises. One might smash the biceps and front delts, other one might be pure chest. So, point being, there is no real king of the exercise, in my opinion, because you can do any exercise shit, and then that's just the same as and any other shit exercise. But that's why I kind of don't look for the, the best exercise for this. Focus on you as an individual, how you train, what you feel the most, how you can connect. Go with the ones that are comfortable for you and your body. But that said, these, there are some exercises you can kind of, you can happily swap out and never touch them again, sweep them under the rug. Case in point, plate press. Literally, whoever invented that, get a life. But anyway, that is it for this video, guys. I did hope you enjoyed it and took something out of it, maybe learned something new, I hope. Um, but otherwise, if you guys want me to keep making these kind of, um, more informative style videos. Uh, I can keep dripping them in the mix, but that is it for me. I've got nothing left for you, and you definitely, definitely know what to do. Stay massive. That was, that was cringy as hell. Why'd you guys let me do that? I thought it looked cool. Oh, nah.